The scientific man does not aim at an immediate result. He does not expect that his advanced ideas will be readily taken up. His work is like that of the planner for the future. His duty is to lay the foundation for those who are to come and point the way. Nikola Tesla Nikola Tesla is known for his numerous inventions, without which the modern world we live in would not be as it is today. But have you ever asked yourself, do you really know everything about him? Let's start with the basics. The Serbian-American inventor was born July 10th, 1856 and was baptized the very next day because his family feared he would not survive due to his poor health. He was the fourth child of Milutin, a Serbian Orthodox priest, and his mother, Georgina. He was expected to follow in his father's footsteps and become a priest, but this was unacceptable to Nikola. After graduating from high school, he returned home and fell ill with cholera. Nikola Tesla wrote later, During one of the moments on my deathbed, which they thought were my last, my father burst into the room. I still remember his pale face as he tried to cheer me up in an uncertain voice. I told him maybe I could recover if he would let me study engineering. You'll go to the best technical school in the entire world, he answered solemnly, and I knew it. From an early age, Nikola demonstrated the obsessiveness that would puzzle and amuse those around him. He could memorize entire books and store logarithmic tables in his brain. He picked up languages easily and could work through days and nights on only a few hours sleep. At the age of 19, he was studying electrical engineering at the Polytechnic Institute at Graz in Austria, where he quickly established himself as a star student. He would spend the next six years of his life thinking about electromagnetic fields and a hypothetical motor powered by alternate current that would and should work. The thoughts obsessed him and he was unable to focus on his schoolwork. Professors at the university warned Tesla's father that the young scholar's working and sleeping habits were killing him. Do you know why Nikola Tesla was the greatest geek who ever lived? Because geeks stay up all night disassembling the world so they can put it back together with new features. They tinker and fix things that aren't broken. Geeks abandon the world around them because they're busy soldering together a new one. Over 100 years ago, Nikola Tesla started fixing things that weren't broken. In 1881, Tesla moved to Budapest and he was walking through a park with a friend, reciting poetry when a vision came to him. There in the park, with a stick, Tesla drew a crude diagram in the dirt, a motor using the principle of rotating magnetic fields created by two or more alternating currents. In June of 1884, he sailed for New York City and arrived with four cents in his pocket and a letter of recommendation from Charles Batchelor, a former employer, to Thomas Edison, who was purported to say, My dear Edison, I know two great men and you are one of them. The other is this young man. A meeting was arranged and once Tesla described the engineering work he was doing, Edison, though skeptical, hired him. Edison offered him $50,000 if he could improve upon the DC generation plants Edison favored. And within just a few months, Tesla informed the American inventor that he had indeed improved upon Edison's motors. But even though they made a deal, Edison refused to pay up. When you become a full-fledged American, you'll appreciate an American joke, Edison told him. Tesla promptly quit and took a job digging ditches. But it wasn't long before word got out that Tesla's AC motor was worth investing in. And the Western Union Company put Tesla to work in a lab not far from Edison's office, where he designed AC power systems that are still used around the world today. 
while Tesla was known for discovering amazing things and then forgetting to write them down, Edison was known for running to the patent office as soon as one of his employees had something he could use. Edison wasn't happy for Tesla being his competitor, instead working for him that he ignited a feud with Edison, who at the time was trying to sell the world his DC system. His direct current system required a power plant every square mile and couldn't transmit electricity very far. On the other hand, Tesla's AC system used thinner wires, had higher voltages, and could transmit electricity over long distances. Edison launched a massive public campaign to discredit Tesla's AC, while Tesla partnered with financial mogul George Westinghouse in an attempt to convince power companies to switch over to AC using Tesla's patented AC induction motor. Edison's main campaign strategy was to prove that AC, which used much higher voltages than DC, was simply too dangerous to use in homes. And to prove that, he went to ruthless extremes. So what did Edison do? Families living in the neighborhood near Edison's laboratory began to notice their pets were disappearing. That was because Edison had been paying schoolboys 25 cents a head for live dogs and cats. Edison organized demonstrations executing stray dogs and cats, and later cows and horses. One of the first demonstrations took place in 1888 with the electrocution of a large dog named Dash. Edison first sent 1,000 volts of DC through the dog to prove that he would be, if not unharmed, still alive. Then he hooked up the dog to 300 volts of AC and smoked the pup into oblivion. And he was just getting warmed up. The real test came in 1890, and it was no ordinary animal. The victim was a convicted murderer named William Kimmler. Edison campaigned for the opportunity to create a more humane method of capital punishment, and still in the midst of war with the currents. He opted to create the electric chair with AC. After all, what better way to prove the dangers of AC than by killing a man with it? And he couldn't have asked for a more visceral demonstration. The first charge burned through Kimmler's insides for a whole 17 seconds, after which he was still gasping for breath. The second charge lasted four minutes, and Kimmler burst into flame before finally dying. In 1903, Edison created his largest demonstration yet. He sent 6,600 volts of AC through a circus elephant named Topsy, while 1,500 people stood and watched. The execution was filmed and later released under the name Electrocuting an Elephant. The only goal of Edison's propaganda was to convince the public that Tesla's AC was too dangerous for domestic use. And from all the above, it's clear that he did not choose the means to achieve his goal. In short, the only thing Edison was a champion of was idiocy, which the poor innocent animals experience on their own skin. When most people think of Thomas Edison, they think of the man who invented the light bulb. But Edison didn't invent the light bulb. He improved upon the ideas of 22 other men who pioneered the light bulb before him. Edison simply figured out how to sell the light bulb. Edison's enduring legacy is a result of his invention factories where tasks and inventions were carried out by legions of his employed scientists and workers. After getting an idea, Edison would leave most of the experimentation on his assistants. By having multiple patents and inventions developing in parallel, Edison ensured a consistent hefty financial supply to his assistants to continue running experiments and fleshing out more designs. Thomas Edison is an example of a non-geek who operated in a geek space. He believed the value of his inventions could be gauged by how much money they made. He was neither mathematician nor scientist. He simply believed he could just hire people to do that for him. Edison was not a geek. He was a CEO. Wilhelm Röntgen is credited with discovering the X-ray. Can you guess which mustachioed inventor beat him to it but got zero credit for it? 
Nikola Tesla. Likewise, when the x-rays were initially detected, they were believed to cure blindness and other diseases. Tesla warned about the fact that x-rays could be dangerous and refused to conduct medical experiments on humans using them. On the other hand, as soon as a lucrative opportunity arose, Edison immediately set about experimenting with x-rays on people. One of his assistants, Clarence Daly, was exposed to radiation to such extent that his arms had to be amputated in an effort to save his life. However, it was not successful and he eventually died of cancer. Daly is considered to be the first American to die as a result of experimenting with radiation. In addition to his assistant dying from that overdose, Edison nearly blinded himself by repeatedly firing x-rays into his own eyes. Edison immediately ceased his experimentation into x-rays following the death of Clarence Daly, famously stating, Don't talk to me about x-rays, I'm afraid of them. The main reason Tesla's contribution to the discovery of x-rays hasn't become better known is that much of his work was lost when his laboratory in New York burned down on March 13, 1895. We'll never know who would have gotten the Nobel Prize for the discovery of x-rays had Tesla's work not been lost together with his New York laboratory. Ever wonder who built the first hydroelectric plane at Niagara Falls and proved to the world that this type of power was a practical energy source? Who was experimenting with cryogenic engineering nearly 50 years before its invention? Who held patents over a hundred years ago that were later used in development of the transistor? Who discovered the resonant frequency of the Earth? The answer is Tesla. He was also the first person to record radio waves from outer space. By the way, ever heard of Guglielmo Marconi, Italian physicist and inventor? He won a Nobel Prize for Physics in 1909. Tesla pioneered interplanetary radio communication with Marconi, whom he later fell out with when the U.S. Patent Office mysteriously overturned his patents and effectively credited Marconi with the invention of the radio, who was in fact using several of Tesla's patents. After Marconi became world famous for sending the first transatlantic message, this is what Tesla said. Marconi is a good fellow. Let him continue. He's using 17 of my patents. Have you ever heard of ball lightning, also called globe lightning, a rare aerial phenomenon in the form of a luminous spear that is generally several centimeters in diameter? It usually occurs near the ground during thunderstorms in close association with cloud to ground lightning. It normally lasts only a few seconds, usually moving about and then vanishing suddenly either silently or explosively. It is an extremely rare phenomenon, and even today, no scientists have ever successfully produced it in a laboratory, except Tesla did back in the 1890s. If you can't imagine life without your TV remote, thank Nikola Tesla for making it possible. In 1898, there was, of course, no such thing as television, but Tesla did create the very first remote control, in New York City's Madison Square Garden, he gave demonstrations of the first radio control device, a small boat. While remote controls may seem ordinary today, this was the first time that radio signals had ever been used to trigger shifts in the mechanical operations of a distant device. Tesla invented, predicted, or contributed to development of hundreds of technologies that play big parts in our daily lives like neon and fluorescent lights, the modern electric motor, and wireless communications. But Tesla's long-held dream was to create a source of inexhaustible, clean energy that was free for everyone. He strongly opposed centralized coal-fired power stations that spewed carbon dioxide into the air that humans breathed. He believed the Earth had fluid electrical charges running beneath its surface that 
when interrupted by a series of electrical discharges at repeated set intervals, would generate a limitless power supply by generating immense low frequency electrical waves. One of Tesla's most extraordinary experiments was to transmit electrical power over long distances without wires or cables, a feat that has baffled sciences ever since. Tesla imagined constructing special stations which would send electricity and communications to the entire globe, an idea he called the World Wireless System. This attracted the attention of J.P. Morgan, who offered financing for the Wardenclyffe Tower in New York, a massive magnifying transmitter, also known as a high-power harmonic oscillator. The Wardenclyffe Tower was built to be 187 feet tall and anchored 300 feet into the ground. When Marconi sent the first radio transmission across the Atlantic, Tesla changed his plan for the Wardenclyffe Tower to transmit free energy to the entire world. Just think, a man ahead of his time might have brought clean energy and free electricity to everyone and averted dangerous climate change well before it had ever begun. But Tesla's biggest mistake was that he cared more about the people than he did about the profit. And unfortunately for Tesla, along with the natural world and all of us living today and the generations to come, J.P. Morgan and his other backers at the time saw his dream of free energy as a threat to their business model. In short, a threat to capitalism through which they made their millions. Tesla was unable to secure any financial backing after J.P. Morgan pulled out, and shortly after, he was declared bankrupt. Tesla was eventually undone by what he called ignorant, unimaginative people consumed by self-interest, powerful men who sought to protect the immensely profitable low-tech industries they had spent a lifetime building. So thanks to his incredible mind and all around 300 patents worldwide for his inventions, Tesla should have been rich and famous, right? Unfortunately, that was not the case. Tesla lived in a time when the world demanded results that were practical and profitable. We didn't want radio astronomy or free energy. We wanted light bulbs and toaster ovens. Tesla's contributions were not incremental. They were revolutionary. Nikola Tesla was a man displaced in time and the greatest geek who ever lived. Tesla, the genius whose dream was thwarted by the nature of reality, lived a humble existence in a tiny New York apartment until his death in 1943. But what would the world have been like if electricity was clean and free for everyone? Just like Tesla, we can only dream about it. Thank you for watching and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. We really hope you subscribe and if you'd like to be notified of future releases, just hit the bell button. Leave a comment. Let us know what your thoughts are on all of this and what topics you'd like to explore in our future videos.